to How Not to Make a Fly Screen by Nariana Grace at Sacred Life. Well, unlike the Mitre 10 videos, this is going to be telling you um, all the mistakes you can make, which I have made, and here's my evidence to prove it. Ta-da! So um, these are cut at um, the wrong angles, and the uh, insert where the spline goes is on the wrong side. Work in progress. I now have three sides joined together here. I'm about to work on the fourth one. This is the window I'm doing. I don't know if you can see that there. Ta -da. So yes, all the things that you need are spline. Spline roller. Measuring tape. Pencil. Oops. Fly screen frame corners. They look like this, or you can get plasticky ones too. Um, my little addition, they don't tell you this on the Mitre 10 and the Bunnings website, a little bit of sandpaper. I'll reveal the secret later. You need a metal saw. Okay, that's got the fine tooth on it. All right. One that's not too blunt like mine, makes it a bit easier. You obviously need to buy lengths, oops, lengths of the frame from um, Bunnings or Mitre 10, and they come in a variety of colours, so check the colours that your house has got. And you need a mitre box. Now, the fly screen mitre boxes dedicated to making fly screens are actually a lot narrower than this. I'm going to show you a very non health and safety way of using this one without a bench vise or screws or anything. But ideally, it's supposed to be screwed down onto a bench and made very stable so you don't cut yourself and have a disaster. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, so the first thing um, you need to do is to not cut the length so that um, the angle is the same on both sides. Ta-da, that was my first cutting one. My chooks want to say hello. There you go, chookies. Say hello. Bark, 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 bark. Hello, chookies. <laughs> they want to be famous, just like me. Um, yeah, and then the second mistake I made. All right, so... Here it looks as though I've done a nice cut so the angles meet each other like they would sit in a corner. But, um, see this ridge here at the bottom, all right, where my thumb is? That has to be on the inside, all right? So actually, again, I've got my angles wrong. So even though I've got it the right length and I cut the nice 45 degree angles, um, yeah, it has to be on the inside. So um, eventually I've got that right. So how not to do a fly screen, all right? So. Um, it's really good if you can get one off a screen and have a look at it, but um, yes, I'm going to press pause now. Now, unless you're fond of getting iron filings in your eyes, like I am, because I've already been up to the bathroom to rinse my eye out, um, it's a really good idea to wear some goggles because you get very fine um, little bits of metal coming off the end and it's quite a windy day. And um, yeah, you can measure your window frame, insert the measuring tape at the top there, Run it down the length or across the side, and in the corner, um, mine's measuring at about 850. If I right, go right to the end, it's 860. I've been cutting at 850, or you could probably cut at 855 to allow a bit of movement to be able to get the screen in and out. And then you do that across the side as well. So, as you can see, I've got my tape stuck to the end of my frame, and I've made a little pencil mark here at 850. And I'm going to use this mitre box to cut a nice 45 degree angle across. And um, I'll show you how I'm going to do that without kosher methods. How not to um, cut your toes off. <laughs> so yes, like I said, I don't have this. This is supposed to be screwed into a bench and secured. Or you get a very narrow type of uh, mitre which fits just the width of this in, um, so you could probably buy one of those from Bunnings, but this is what I had to hand. Um, so I'm placing pressure with my foot um, to stop it from sliding. I wouldn't ordinarily do this, but the, um, the guides in the mitre stop the blade from coming out. So, um, And then I'm just going to gently start sawing, and that's where my toe off. And I'm going to use two hands now so to hold the box, so I'm going to turn the video off. So. Um, here I have my first piece that I've cut. Now you can see that um, some of the edges, not all of them, but um, 
it might just be the quality of the um, equipment I'm using or it could just be the nature of the beast, I don't know. But um, just a little bit of uh, sandpaper. It doesn't actually have to be very um, thick and coarse. Um, just a little bit of sandpaper um, on the block and you just sandpaper off those edges. That actually happens really quickly but I'm going to need two hands to do that so I'll do that now. And there you go, that's only taken me a few seconds and it just makes it safe, um, safer to handle later for getting in and out and it looks better as well. So, um, like I said, they don't tell you that on the Mitre 10 website, but it just makes sense to me, really. So this is where I made my first mistake. I, I'd cut this, this end nicely and got that figured out and then um, and I cut the other end the wrong way around. So now I've gone to the other side of the Mitre box and... You know what, there's probably another way of doing this, but I don't have a very logical mind and I don't care because I've found a way to do it. So you've got to line up. So I'm just going to trim the end off this one off. Um, so I'm doing it with my uh, other way around. So my other foot's going to go here. And um, I'll be sawing that bit off in a second. So as you can see here, I'm almost... Again, sand that, and then I'm going to put all the four sides together. So just be aware when handling your fly screen that uh, when you're playing around with the frame, um, for example, I'm going to now be fitting in the uh, corners. Place a blanket or something on the floor, otherwise you're going to scratch your frame on the cement and the paint will come off, and then you'll be really cross with yourself. So these are the metal corners. And um, if I can manage to hold my phone and do this at the same time, it would be a miracle. So they just go in that way. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So we'll have to use two hands in a minute, but they just slide in, as you can see. And um, press it in until it can't go any further. So I've just got that last bit in there. And I'm just pressing down to get this last bit in onto the ground like that and um, there we have it a frame which isn't too bad by my standards um, so that's the side we need now for putting the spline in right next challenge So, um, yeah, here's another aspect of <laughs> how not to make a fly screen. All right, so I thought before I put my spline in, I'll actually see if I can get the frame that I've made into the window. Um, now, obviously, you have to make it tight enough that the bugs can't get in, but not wide enough, so wide that you can't actually fit the frame in. So, I mean, I've allowed a few millimetres, but um, so I thought if I put it to the side like that, there... Um, because someone said to me try and get the top in first and then you can slide that under there but if I try to force this corner up here to the top um, it's going to scrape on the side there too much so um, I think I will make this top bit a little bit narrower so that I can get it in so I'm going to have to take it off and saw some more so yes um, <laughs> I uh, didn't quite make my screen narrower enough, narrow enough this way, okay, across the top. Uh, so what I need to do is just to take a few centimetres off, so or mils, so I can actually get it in that way. Uh, and maybe from both sides, yeah. So, uh, it's uh, been an hour and a half, and if I knew what I was doing, I probably could have this done in about half an hour, so or 45 minutes, so, however... I have another fly screen to make for another window so by the time I've done this one I think that I will have been able to um, yeah, get that second one done properly so how not to make a fly screen continued upwards I now have a bit of leftover um, fly screen here which just happens to fit the window I have my spline 
and as you can see I've already just um, begun to run that around and it was my little roller so wish me luck I'll report back but also I like to say that um, taking 15 mil off that window was too much I'm going to keep it that way I think it's still going to stop the um, mozzies from getting in but um, in retrospect, I think if it was uh, well, I had a 585, I would have cut it back to 580 max. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so it was 590, so I took 10 mil off, and I think that's plenty um, to be able to get the fly screen in. Okay, bye. So, here we are. I've got my first attempt at putting the spline on, so I haven't trimmed it yet, um, as you can see. Um, now, something a friend said to me is that if you do the if you pull this too tight, the, um, in your attempt to make it nice and smooth, um, if you can see the frame, I'll just put the... See how that frame is rocking? It's just a little bit bowed. So I have to just loosen that um, flyaway off a little bit, so I'm just going to pull a bit of spline out and do it a little bit looser. Um, I think I overcompensated for the fact that I'm doing it on my own. So, again, how not to make a fly screen. Um, I've successfully de-rocked my... Great. All it took was just uh, one that out, just loosened it off, and um, oh, hello, chookies. Hello. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> yes, they always would have something to say. So yes, um, I just took one side out and just um, rolled it back in without pulling on it, and it was fine. So um, yeah, and now all I have to do is figure out how to trim this. Um, off without cutting too much. Um, it says use a standing knife, so I guess I'll do that, but um, yeah, we'll see. Here we have the finished product inside the house, and uh, windows are clean, <laughs> but um, hopefully, we now have bug free fresh breezes coming in, and it only took me two and a half hours. So, that's all from me from how not to make a fly screen.